the uh, it's also a pleasure and honor to be of any help to the junior doctors because all of us had been there one day before the career in urology is actually a very attractive career um, first urology is a sub specialization of surgical branches is one of the sub specialization of the surgical branches uh, in india the career pathway for urology goes uh, through the ms general surgery after which you need to get into mch or a dnb program for urology and once you have gone through the program then you are given a qualification for to perform uh, urological procedures now uh, the in my opinion the career choice of urology is lovely because it's a nice uh, surgical branch which is a surgical branch but they use a lot of technology tools uh, camera video equipment gadgetry uh, and patients are extremely happy at the end of your procedure they come with the block kidney you have relieved the blockage you remove the stone or they have relieved the, the urinary obstruction or you have removed a tumor overall the patients feel very happy at the end of the procedure and other procedures are very uh, tedious long or laborious except a couple and therefore you have short sweet procedures giving great outcomes and happy patients um, and your patients are plenty as well as long as summer is there stones will be there and as long as people get aging you will have prostate problems so you never be in dearth of patients um, and it is a very family friendly branch you don't get much of night on calls um, you finish a long day work but you have a good break in the night um, in terms of future prospectors after qualifying to be a urologist there are plenty more there are sub specialization in urology which you can take onwards and be a super super sub specialized a uh, person in urology as well so overall urology is a lovely career to be if you want to take up a surgical branch which not much of investment but on the other hand do need some investment in urology uh, just to differentiate and uh, make you understand the scheme if you take cardiothoracic as a branch you are heavily dependent on a hospital setting with tertiary care with icu and so on and so forth this is general surgery is a very generic branch and there are plenty of general surgeons and you are compete you are competing with each other for the pie urology is somewhere in between the two in terms of investment you need the gadgetry to run your business will be about uh, 5 to 7 lakh rupees uh, of equipment investment and in terms of clinic space you just need one clinic space and the most essential uh, outpatient test that you do as a urologist is a uroflow test the equipment of which cost over 40000 rupees um there are plenty of scan centers around you and hence you don't need to invest on that so overall to get going after qualification uh if at all you need about you know 8 to 9 lakhs you are you're on your uh, on the, on the road uh, as far as urology practice is concerned once you have started your practice and with this equipment you can do freelancing practice you can go to any hospital and operate and come out you literally you and your clinic uh, goes in hand in a box uh, in the car boot uh, now moving on into super sub specialist branches in urology the only branch where you need a lot of support is a branch uh, which is uh, called oncology where you want to do robotic surgery question because surgeons need skills and without skills you are not a surgeon sadly so um, in urology as uh, i explained it's a very gadget dependent branch and therefore um, if you are reasonably good in video games you can almost get on with uh, treatment in urology now the um, uh, the mch program the dmb program in india have moved a long way forward and nowadays um, every mch and dmb program has enough gadgetry available in the center where you are going to get trained and you will get uh, what we call core urology skills reasonably upskilled up so that you can reasonably get on with basic bread and butter urology the moment you are qualifying and coming out uh, the endo urology skills are reasonably well exposed during your training period itself now beyond the endo urology skills beyond the core urology skills uh, to equip yourself into one of the sub specialties of urology obviously uh, some extra training coaching will be good 
and that will then means you need to uh, you know take uh, uh, take special training programs for that. Now to summarize, core urology for you to start your bread and butter, bread and butter practice, uh, you can the investments are little and the training that you get in your DNB MCG programs are reasonably adequate to start off. I would rather call it an interface between the surgeon and the patient where you are using a robotic platform in order to carry out your procedure. So it's uh, in a way it's a augmented laparoscopic surgery. Now in laparoscopic surgery there are innate problems such as you have to stand by the patient's side, uh, you have your hands and shoulders ache a lot, there is a human error tendency, there is a human tremor tendency and so on and so forth and most important you have only a 2D vision. This is in robotic surgery it offsets all these things that you suffer with laparoscopy. Now does it mean that every urologist need to be trained in, uro in robotic surgery? Of course not. There is no need for that. The robotic surgery is primarily useful in cancer surgery and to a, to a, a smaller extent in the other subspecialties of urology only in a tiny bit of the subspecialty. And hence, you don't need to be a qualified robotic surgeon for you to practice urology at all. The bread and butter urology still forms the pillar stone for urology practice. Now, if you choose to do robotic surgery, which inevitably means that you, you have to choose to do oncological urology, uh, then of course you will be better off with some training for that. And then after the training and adequate exposure, you need to find a placement that is a hospital which has a robot. Now, if you ask me is the robot is a panacea of cure answer is completely no but sadly the market forces drives the equation both in India and elsewhere in the world and hence uh, not very far from now say in the next 10 years you will find lot more robots around the place and like laparoscope you will get used to it very soon as well. There will be no dearth of urological patients because human beings are going to live longer and as they grow older, uh, you are inevitably a uh, patient for the urological sciences. So there will be no dearth of patients at all. Secondly, uh, with the advent of uh, health knowledge that is available on the internet and the next door neighbor and various social media platform, you are going to access health in terms of master, master checkups, scans and you are going to be picked up to have some problem or other for which inevitably the patient will now, the future generation of patients are going to be extremely tech savvy. You are going to find lots of patients who are going to read whatever information that they have and then come and ask a lot of questions. And urology is a nice branch between a combination like OBS and gynae where there is a, a, a proportion is medical management and another proportion is surgical management. And urology is no different to that. So you are going to have patients who will require medical management and don't be in a rush or hurry to, to consider surgery for them. Uh, only if the medical management fails, you, you consider surgical options for them. And if you otherwise cope, the patients will cross refer and come back to you to haunt you. So therefore, don't be in a rush uh, to run before you Specialties of urology. There are roughly eight subspecialties of urology, oncology, transplant, pediatrics, urogyne, reconstruction, andrology, um, and endourology. Now, uh, if you the, the the bread and butter urology is endourology, and to a level uh, half of oncology, and that forms the bread and butter of uh, of urology, and for which you will be trained uh, at the time of your MCH or DNB. Now, if you want to really sub specialize into one of these sub branches, then you need to go for further training for at least a year or two augment your skills before you start practice and perhaps have a mentor as well before you start practice. Uh, interestingly, there are plenty of women nowadays in neurology. Uh, it used to be almost none 15-20 uh, years ago. We have plenty now. Perhaps one of the most attractive features for women to enter urology is the fact that it's a family friendly brand. Uh, this as an opportunity to deal with the, the female aspect of the urological problem, namely urogyne. That is a branch which are going to you know, uh, overlap with the gynecologists who are interested in the same branch as well. Uh, it's a Venn diagram branch where uh, you as a urologist is interested in the female aspects of urology which is incontinence and lower uh, tract and pelvic floor work 
and the gynecologist may be uh, interested in the same and the best thing is to work in partnership. The, the training abroad is entirely different compared to what the training in India, especially surgical training. In the West, uh, there is no concept of general surgery, it, it doesn't exist. So once you choose to have a surgical career, you are uh, you know, pushed into, after a couple of years of what we call core uh, surgical training, you uh, start off to do what is uh, in your interest as a specialty. It may be urology, it may be cardiac surgery, it may be plastic, it may be anything else. But in India, you have a, a, a mark called uh, MS General Surgery and uh, therefore what happens is you have to pass the first glitch to enter into the speciality that you wish to work with. So the training between West and India are completely different. Assuming that you have entered the training scheme in India and assuming that you have entered the training scheme in, in the West in urology, the difference that you will notice is that in the West the training is much longer and inevitably after what we call core urology training, vast majority of the, of the trainees in the West will have a named specialization for which they get trained up as well. Versus in India, the core urology is where you come to and at that point you exit the system with the MCH degree. And therefore, the difference is obvious that the core urology is what uh, the, uh, the M MCH DNB PGs are comfortable with and when it comes to subspecialized practice, they inevitably start seeking out for fellowship programs. Versus the uh, people coming from the West inevitably have gone into those uh, in-course fellowship within the training scheme and therefore when they come out of the, the program with an FRCS or an AV degree, they inevitably have subspecialized as well.